Hey, welcome back. I wanted to go ahead and close out today's lesson with a brief discussion on Lambda expressions uh, with the application to our filter uh, movies uh, higher order function that we've been building up over the past couple of uh, lessons. So just to recap the motivating example that started out, uh, I guess, a few lessons ago at this point, we defined a rather rudimentary type uh, movies. It was simply a struct with four data fields, data members, uh, title, which was a standard template library string, director, standard template library string, rating, which was an enumeration type, uh, and then release here, which was an unsigned end. We went ahead and populated a uh, standard template library of, uh, vector of movies, uh, of movie objects called movies. We pushed back to its citizen cane by Orson Welles with a um, rating of PG 1941 as its release here is rear window Pulp Fiction. And ever since then, we've been concerning ourselves with these videos as we've been kind of moving through uh, this uh, functional style programming uh, theme in C++. So we defined a higher order function that accepted both function pointers and function objects called filter movies. We said that in order to receive both function pointers and function objects, we could use the senior template library uh, type function, which had a kind of a crafty uh, template arguments here, but which more or less specified the return type of the function it was to receive as well as the parameter list thereof. We said that once we bound a function to in this case, the parameter filter, we could go ahead and use it as we would any other function within the body of filter movies. So if you recall, the whole purpose of filter movies was to create a general way where provided a collection of movies, we could filter out and receive back a vector of movies who met the specifications of the filter. For instance, we introduced this idea of passing this function released before 1990. It's a predicate function, simply returns true. If a movie that is passed to it has a release year of less than 1990, false otherwise. And we showed that how we could go ahead and pass this function to filter movies. It's uh, in this case, this is a true and true function. So when we're passing it, well, what's being passed, it's, again, we talked about how kind of the name of a function more or less gives us its address, similar to how the name of an array provides us the address to its base element. So we went ahead and passed in release before 1990 to our filter movies function. In that case, um, filter was simply uh, bound uh, to that function and anywhere where we were calling filter, well, since filter was bound to released before 1990, this call would invoke this function with this argument provided to its parameter. We went through kind of the same idea. We built up function objects. We said the cool thing about function objects is they can maintain state, right? So they had these internal data members where we could store stuff as we're going through and defining their um, uh, call operator. So we saw that, okay, the standard template library function uh, type, it can also bind to function objects. So objects that are callable that meet again, its criteria that they're returning, have a call operator defined that returns a Boolean value and has a parameter list that more or less matches. So in this case, the result was more or less, uh, you know, identical to that of the function pointers released before in 1990. This constructed a function object whose year was initialized with the integer value 1990. And that's because we used its parameterized constructor to construct the function object. So that object gets bound to filter. So filter is now effectively storing a function object here, this release before, whose year data members initialized with 1990. And then, okay, when we call filter within the body of filter movies, well, the call operator would be invoked for our function object and movie would be passed to the parameter movie in the call operator. And the net result here was the same. In this case, any movies that met the filter criteria, that is when passed to the release before's uh, 1990s uh, call operator returned true, that movie would be pushed to the filtered movies vector, otherwise, it would not be pushed, and we do this for each movie within the sequence. 
So let's go ahead and look at how lambda functions or lambda expressions uh, can be helpful or used in conjunction with our filter movies function. So if we look here, we still have this wonderful standard template library function type, uh, which will be the type for filter. We said in the previous um, lesson, and I kind of recapped it here, this combined two function objects. We have a call operator defined to return Boolean with a parameter list that um, is more or less matching. You can also bind to um, uh, function, uh, function pointers effectively, or I guess it would be a function pointer so it can receive addresses to functions uh, that also have a, uh, uh, th this signature as described. Since a lambda expression, remember a lambda expression, expression essentially is converted by the compiler to a closure class, which had that call operation defined for it. And at runtime, created a closure, which was essentially a function object. So an object who, whose type had the call operator defined for it. What that means is we can go ahead and pass lambda expressions to our standard template library function um, filter parameter. So notice here how short and concise this is. So we didn't have to go out and define a function. We didn't have to go through the process of defining a function object. Instead, the compiler defined the function object for us. And when this code gets hit at runtime, a function object is going to be passed and bound to the filter parameter of filter movies. Then when we hit this statement here, or this expression here, filter is going to be, um, this will cause our closures call operator to be invoked. And again, that was defined um, to simply return true if the movie passed to it had a release year of less than 1990. In that case, if this evaluated as such, the filtered movies would gain one new um, element in the collection because that movie would be pushed back. If this uh, filter returned false, well, the movie wouldn't be included. And we do this process for each movie in the collection. But just to like, you know, go through, I guess, uh, continue kind of emphasizing the utility of this. So this is, you know, one instance here. So it was very easy to craft um, something that a higher order function would receive. And we could pass a lambda expression like this to copy if, remove it, sort, et cetera. So, that's, so we wouldn't have to define a brand new function, wouldn't have to go through the process of writing out the definition of a function object, because this syntax here is going to generate that for us through the process described up here. So the other cool thing is you can begin to make these rather elaborate. So the lambda body um, doesn't have to be, you know, simply as maybe trivial as uh, just, just integer comparison, but you can kind of write it out um, in, a, in whatever sense is sensible to you in the context that you're applying this. For instance, maybe you're filtering movies somewhere and you wanted not only the movies with the release year of perhaps 1960 instead of 1990, but also the movies who had a director of Alfred Hitchcock. In this case, passing this function, this lambda expression, if you will, to um, our filter movies uh, function, what would happen is filter movies would return us a collection of movies that satisfied this filtering criteria. And I mean, look how easy this is. If you wanted, you know, maybe all the movies within some sort of range with a direct specific director, maybe you want a movie with a specific title, maybe you're taking input from the user and you're somehow, um, you know, asking a number of questions like, um, hey, what you're, you know, what range would you like? What director? And to search your movies collection or movies database. When you start looking at this, the code becomes very declarative. We're kind of just specifying what we want. And filter movies is taking care of the rest for us. For instance, if you start looking at this definition, 
you can almost see it relate back to that um, very declarative structured query, uh, query language, so that which you were using to interact with your SQLite databases. You know, you could do something like select kind of all the fields from movies where movies have a release date less than 1960 and the director is Alfred Hitchcock. You can, I mean, I mean the power of these Lambda functions is you can begin to um, craft in, in this particular application, this filter application, a very um, um, kind of elaborate uh, query, if you will, um, without having to go through defining a function that would do that or a function object that would also give the desired behavior as specified here. The other kind of cool thing is um, you can begin using these. It's not just for like filter specifications, but there are other high order functions we'll get into such as maps, which effectively take each element within some sort of collection you define some sort of lambda function or you can pass up you know, the address of a function or a function object to it, but it would apply whatever's in that, um, within the body of uh, that to every element in the collection return you a vector or whatever you specify, a collection of all of the objects in the original collection, but with that particular transformation applied to it and that transformation could have been applied it's a function object, it's a function. So it could have been defined in a function object, in a function, or in a Lambda expression. Then there's for each, um, which is another common higher order function where effectively some sort of transform is applied to every element in the collection. So opposed to receiving back um, a uh, vector with the transform applied to it, um, the for each is essentially applying the transform to the original data and actually mutating the underlying, each of the elements within the collection as prescribed by whatever that transformation is. And again, that could be Lambda function, function object, function. Um, but hopefully you can kind of see the utility of um, using Lambda functions in these instances. So with that, um, we're done for the day and I'll see you all tomorrow though. It does look like we're, getting up there on time for the week. Uh, but I do wanna go over, I think some higher order functions. We'll see whether or not uh, there's time here shortly, but until next time, see y'all later.